Dear Sapdolf, what will today's episode be about? Just as that red thing next to me says, we will be addressing the basic concept of SAP systems, the instance number. It's a simple topic, but worth explaining. Are we starting with theory or practice? Let's do a tiny practical exercise at the beginning. This is the connection configuration to my system, specifically directly to the application server. One of the parameters is the instance number. In my case, it is 00. zero. I have prepared a program called Wireshark to track TCP connections. I monitor packets whose destination is a specific IP address, namely my application server. In addition, I set a filter for synchronization packets. This way, I should see every attempt to establish a connection to my server. I will be most interested in which server ports my computer is trying to connect to. I log on to the system to track what will be going on in the network. Now I can log out, because the activity has been already recorded. I see that my computer sent connection request to port 3200. I assume that this is dispatch a port of my instance. Let's do a little experiment. I'll change the instance number in the GUI configuration to 77. I don't have such an instance, so I expect an error, but we'll see how my computer tries to connect to the server. I see an activity. The expected error also appeared. It seems that my computer tried to connect to port 3277. It tried five times. 3277. Does it ring a bell? 77 is the instance number. That's right. So you already know that the instance number has something to do with SAP port numbers. But before we get into the details, let's first discuss the concept of default ports, completely without any relation to SAP. If it's not related to the SAP, why even consider it? To understand why SAP came up with the instance number concept. Fair enough. Virtually every operating system has a services file that maps service names to uh, port numbers. Take, for example, the services to which TCP port 22 is assigned. This is SSH. So the default port of this service is 22. Therefore, if I call the SSH command to my host, the program will guess that I want to connect to port 22. Of course, this is just the default port and I can specify any other, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, but the 22 is the standard. Let's see what's behind port 21, which is a well-known FTP service. And what about 25? I bet on SMTP for mail handling. Exactly. By the way, most traditional Linux services have port numbers lower than 1024, because these ports are especially protected. But services can also run on higher ports. For example, 1352 is the standard port of the Lotus Domino server used by Notes. But let's focus on something more modern and useful. Let's take port 443, which is the default HTTPS port. This means that if I open my browser and type in the address of a page that starts HTTPS, the program knows that it is supposed to connect to port 443. I don't need to specify this explicitly. Oh, SAP's website. So they are also familiar with the concept of a default port. On a general level, for sure but they designed their services quite differently. See what I can find in ETC services on the SAP server. Wow, quite a lot of entries. Here are hundreds of ports defined. The funny thing is the 100 for secure dispatcher connection. 47XX is not needed, because encrypted connections are handled by the standard dispatcher port. And here is 100 for the dispatcher. And this is a good example. SAPDP00 is dispatcher port, for instance, 0. This translates to 3200 port. Similarly, SAPDP01 is, for instance, 1, with port 3201, and so 100 in a row. So we can say that there is no default port number for the ABAP dispatcher service, but there are as many as 100 such ports, depending on the selected ABAP instance. So we can assume that the last two digits of each port in SAP is the instance number? Unfortunately, no. Sometimes the instance appears in the middle of the port number. Sometimes the port does not depend on the instance at all. Sometimes it's fixed. Sometimes it's configurable. What a mess. Well, maybe not a mess, but certainly an abundance. 
Others kindly label it the richness of port diversity. But there is some logic and reasons behind it. I will try to explain it, but I will focus on the very idea of instances, because ports deserve a separate video. Then what is the reason for this division? To begin, I'll show the diagram you already know from the episode on SAP control and SAP startup. This is my SAP system. I actually have three instances of SAP software here. Instance 00 is ABAP. Instance 01 is ASCS working with it. And Instance 02 is the HANA database. You will probably say that after all, these are different types of instances, and their ports do not normally overlap. And you are right. Apart from the start services, there are actually no common points. However, Imagine that for various reasons, we might want to have several ABAP instances on one server, whether belonging to one or different systems, then the concept of instance number and different ports suddenly becomes very necessary and straightforward. Hmm. Actually, the concept of instances and separate ports probably helps a lot to keep things in order in such a case. Yes, especially because in addition to ports, the concept of naming instance directories also arranges disk issues. But couldn't it have been designed in a simpler way? And a large server could probably be divided into smaller virtual machines. The administrator could then manage resource allocation well, right? Of course. You are right. It could have been designed in many other ways. But consider that this architecture was designed years ago, before the era of virtualization and the cloud. And it still works fine. What's more, nothing can stop you from setting a standard in your company and using a separate server for each instance. Then you can stick to agreed instance numbers and have fixed ports. Consider instances as a flexibility feature, not a disadvantage. Okay, sounds reasonable. Now I can show you how the ports look like on my system. I know from Wireshark that the SAP GUI connects to port 3200. I check this port with the ss command, which I presented in a video about useful Linux commands. Using grep I can check all the ports opened by this instance. I am interested in the first three. They all end with 00. I have a secure gateway port, a gateway port, and the already known dispatcher port. The other four I described in a video about ICM. In the same way, I can check the ports opened by the instance 01. I expect them to end up with 01. I see here three ports related to the message server. At the end is the onQueue server port. We can't forget about start services. The port number starts with 5 and ends with 13 for HTTP. And here, I also recognize the three instances installed on my server. ABAP, ASCS, and Database. Both SAP instances along with the start service ports are also shown by SAP control with the get system instance list function. 00, 01, 00, 01. Okay, that's even pretty clear. And what does it look like from the application side? Okay, I will log into the system very quickly because I would like to show one more thing later. Logged in. Uh, I'm now going to SM51 where I have a list of instances. In my case, there is only one application instance. Its number can be seen at the end of the name in the first column, and that's as much as I wanted to show here. And what else did you want to show? And what would you like to see? Maybe where the instance number is configured in the system. That is, how does the system know what number to register at? To be honest, it was something similar I wanted to show. First, you will see where this number appears in the configuration. And then, by I will perform a quick and dirty operation of changing the instance number without using SAP tools. It's just a sandbox, and I want to show how simple the mechanism is. Here, the instance number appears for the first time. I am in the profile folder, and the instance profile name contains D00. However, let's take a look inside. The main and most important parameter that determines the system number is SAP system. A bit confusing, isn't it? Let's look for where else 00 appears. The name of the D00 instance is also relevant. 
Next is the definition of the variable underscore pf, which defines the path to the instance profile. This is a very important parameter, which is later used when calling various programs. I look through the entire profile and, apart from numerous references to pf, I don't see anything that additionally points to the instance number. So do we change the instance number? Let's do that. I'm copying the existing profile to a new name, which points to instance number 7, 7. Certainly, before such a major change, the system must be stopped. Let me do a little self-promotion and recommend, by the way, a video about starting and stopping the system, which explains the operation of the SAP control command. It's a simple topic, of course, but I think you can learn something interesting. Or at least that's what I hope. And remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, leave a like too. Yes, absolutely. This is important. That's right. And my system has already stopped. Both instances. I definitely need to stop the start service of the modified instance too. The start service will run on a different port. So I guess the preparations are behind us. Now it's time for the main action. Yes, I'm taking to editing a new profile. I need to change 00, 00 to 77 in all previously defined places. This is just a comment, but for the sake of order, I will change it too. Main instance parameter. Instance name D77. Double seven in the profile name. And that's it. Now you need to rename the instance directory in USR SAP A4H. The two zeros turn into sevens. Done. You also need to think about the start service. In the USR SAP directory is the SAP services file, which defines the services. It can be accessed by root. Backup is always a good practice. I go into edit and change the double zeros to sevens. Profile name and two references to libraries in the kernel directory. I renamed the instance directory after all. And done, written down. I switched to user A4HADM to start the start service. Moment of truth, and launched. I confirm if the port is open. No. But I got the port number wrong. This one is the correct one for HTTP. 14 is this for HTTPS. That is, the service is working. The last operation will be to start the system. If I haven't made a mistake along the way, everything should start. But different things may happen. I will use the watch command to monitor the changing status of the system. It is starting. Let's remember that this is a USD-130 server. But it is not slow at all. Maybe a little bit. Everything is green. So now it should be possible to log into the new instance? I hope so. I just need to change the configuration of the SAP GUI to instance 77. Done. Now logging in. It works. I'm logged in. Super. Could you check if this is really instance 77? Oh, yes, it is. That is, the task is done. The topic may not have been difficult, but I hope it was at least somewhat interesting. If you think so, please leave a comment. And subscribe to the channel. May your instances always have lucky numbers. See you soon.